People really don't know how going to prison for something you didn't do, a crime you didn't commit, especially for a long, long time, what it does to a person. I was accused of killing a white man in a drug deal gone bad. This is a case they're going to be teaching in law school 100 years from now. What could Dante have become? It was a travesty of justice. It took 26 years to make it partially right. I was exonerated on August 22nd, 2019. <laughs> a lot of people think the ultimate goal is just getting exonerated and getting out of prison, getting your freedom back. It's a lot more than that. Sometimes I wake up just crying. I just cry. People think that when you get exonerated, the fight is over. It's just beginning, really. Only way I can get the felony on my record is get pardoned. I haven't been pardoned. Governor Roy Cooper, for some reason, hasn't pardoned me. He's asking for the state of North Carolina to acknowledge the wrong and give him what is due under the Constitution. They buried this man alive. You're looking at a miracle. There was never an intention for him to be standing here today. We need to see what he can still become. Can I get my part? Can I get my freedom? Something that was given to me by God that you mistakenly took from me? Hey, how you doing? All right, all right. I, put, I walk right here, the police pool right here. The Zach spot pool right here. They jump out, like, what's up, man? And they were like, Dante, you got a warrant for us. I said, a warrant for what? He said, uh, murder. I said, murder? Man, y'all tripping, man, y'all crazy. I said, you know what? Don't worry about it. I ain't doing nothing. I did like this. Slapped them handcuffs on me. That was the last thing. That was the last time I was society. But this is where I got locked up at. I remember the first day I was pulled up to the prison. Then that gate, boom, when you hit them razor wide shape. I was in there so long from a teenager to 44 years old. It was like every time I closed my eyes, I see a long tunnel with a little dot pin prick at the end. And I'd be like, man, am I still in prison? I couldn't sleep. My mind was running, my mind was racing. Life. Man, you got a life center for something you do, you in prison. It's part torture, mental anguish, fear. And the fear is one of the great ones, your fear of never getting out. I was accused of killing a white man in a drug deal gone bad, Mr. George Radcliffe. Now that investigation was like no other. It was a couple of guys shooting and stuff that went on in that area. But when that white guy got killed, you couldn't walk down the street, you couldn't stop. That's a man, but whoever they log up with that through. That's what I said. Because of the racism that was so strong and green. They was looking for, investigating for two months before they locked on me. This was a high profile case. It was a white man who was killed in a black neighborhood known for drugs at that time. It was all over the news. There was a lot of pressure to get somebody for this murder. I don't heard so many stories that they wanted me for drugs. They say I was a big time known drug dealer. I was known, a lot of people know me. But whatever reason it was, you got the wrong man. This is something that's sort of well known in reviews of innocence cases. When you have a white victim who tragically is harmed, we see greater penalties associated 
and we see greater instances of wrongful convictions related to those crimes. Dante being a black man in Greenville, North Carolina in the 1990s was central to why he was convicted and central to why his conviction was not overturned sooner. Every time I went to court, it was a white man over me. I was in a black and white case. Racism was part of the reason why they went so hard to try to solve and get somebody. And it happened to be a black and a white. It wasn't until trial that he knew what the evidence was that was going to be used against him. No physical evidence, no fingerprints, no hair fiber, no nothing. Not of me, not mine, nothing. Nothing on the scene, period. The primary witness that the district attorney put forward was a 15-year-old girl. Her name was Charlene Johnson. Almost immediately following the trial, Charlene came forward and recanted. She told the state that she was nowhere near this murder scene and that she had made up what she said at trial. A young lady came forward and said that her boyfriend had came home and told her that he had shot a white man across town in the truck and that he wasn't going to prison for killing a white man. He said that for 20 something days and then he ki killed himself with a gun, with a gun I guess, committed suicide. That was never heard by a jury. Again, based on a technicality. The court could have al allowed that testimony in. The court did not. I guess they didn't believe it, you know. <laughs> or didn't want to believe it. I don't know, you know. <laughs> I think this is 1998. I think I've been locked up then like three years. I had heard from somebody that if you got a picture of something in your mind that you wanted, you can look at it every day. You could, if you could see it and believe it, you can get it. So I wrote this on, took the picture, wrote this on the picture, and put it up on my mirror. And every day I looked at it and said, I'm free, I'm free. That's what this picture was for. I had to make a willful choice. Was I gonna act like a lifer? Or was I gonna grow up mature and use the situation to better myself. And the first step I did was get in the Bible. I used to read every day one scripture, one verse. I would deliver him and honor him because he set his love upon me. And with long life will I satisfy him. See, he would deliver me, deliver my here first, and then deliver me out of prison. But I had to set, set my love, I had to love him, and that's what I did. It was July 17th, 1994, the day she was born. I was in the county jail. They announced over the intercom, Dante Sharp is the proud father of a baby girl. <laughs> my name is Armani Carmen. I am 27 years old. Dante is my dad. <laughs> when I was younger, they told me he was in jail for something that he didn't do. He had got life. We didn't have a, a bond, you know, with him being in jail. I wouldn't give him a chance, rather. Uh, and I don't really know why. That's a guy I'm facing. a murder charge for something I didn't do. I'm not gonna be there. I told my mom I was gonna better myself. I said, I'm gonna do everything in here that I wouldn't do or didn't think was important in the world. I went all out in everything I did. My mom probably missed four visits at 26 years. Dante needed me then. You know, I feel like he really, he needed me. I didn't want to miss visits. It was already bad enough being in prison for something you didn't do. And, and I felt like, what kind of mother would I be if I 
didn't go see my son. I used to hate to see him leave, though. I really did. Because I didn't know. The not knowing part, that if you ever see him again, and I'd be worried up for him. He would wave, and that wave used to destroy me. You know, they don't realize how much damage they do to a family. I never dreamed it would be, be 26 years. I thought I had got over the tears. I guess I had. met Dante as a Duke Law student. I had started in the Wrongful Convictions Clinic, and as a part of the clinic, you are assigned a client. When I first met him, he would have already been in prison for 16 years. In Dante's case, he received uh, offers of plea deals throughout uh, his time um, of incarceration, and at each turn along the way, he declined because the plea deal required him to say that he had done something that he had not done, to admit to a crime that he was not guilty of. Some innocent people have been coerced, have been tricked, have been scared into it, and just some of them just got tired and took a plea bargain, said they did something for something they didn't do, and I never could understand them. He was saying, I am not gonna allow this system to break a part of me that is still mine. And that is my truth, my integrity, my dignity. And while I completely stand with that, the reality of seeing him have to do that over and over again while the system failed, it it broke me. You're hurting and you're losing faith and hope in humanity. Sometimes I just hollered out sometimes. I used to be like, ah, God, boy. I said, man, nothing, man, nothing, man. Free Dante Sharp. This morning I come out for my son, Montoya Dante Sharp. First, there was no physical evidence. Secondly, there were false witness accounts. There were likely alternative suspects ignored and not pursued. So while Dante was locked up, the real killer was still walking around Greenville. It was a travesty of justice and it took 26 years to make it partially right. The day that Dante got released was in Greenville. It was, you know, in his hometown. His whole family was there. Teresa Newman and Spencer Paris, who put on that case, did a phenomenal job presenting the evidence. You saw the swear to testimony in the court of this action shall be the truth. The whole truth is nothing but the truth, so help me out. Charlene Johnson. She testified again in front of Judge Collins, and she said, I've been trying to make this right. My name is Charlene Johnson. And from where did these details come? They were made up. Made up from where? For what I was told and what I, what I heard. Everything I wrote was, and everything I said was a lie. What did you say? That Mr. Sharp, Mr. Rapper. You could hear in the courtroom a pen drop. People knew that this was an incredibly important moment. It's physically impossible that a man could stand in front of another man <coughs> shot by a gun and have the bullet go through the left arm, graze the heart, and end up in the right arm. It's physically impossible. 
There was no way for the crime to have physically happened the way that the state said it, it was, that it was a physical impossibility. To me, this is sort of the core of how unbelievable it is that Dante sat in prison for 26 years, is that the evidence was right there in front of all of our faces. It was before the courts. The judge went back to his chambers and made it clear that he was gonna announce his ruling from the bench, which is not always what happens in these cases. This honor court in for the county pit now resumes its setting for the dispatch of his business. In the exercise of this discretion, the court finds that justice requires a new trial. In light of the court's ruling, um, I feel safe in saying that I'm pleased to say the state has no interest or desire to call the case for trial subsequently. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Sheriff, I would like Mr. Sharp to be released as soon as possible. You finally get vindicated. You finally proved that all the years you've been telling people, I'm innocent. I'm innocent. Man, I did not do this. I didn't kill this man. I did it. You've been saying it, saying it, saying it. It's, it was real, but it didn't seem real. You, oh God, have spoken this day. Yeah. <laughs> Getting out of prison wrongfully convicted to get exonerated. I think it's bittersweet to everybody at the end of the day. I struggle with these sometimes. You check out scanning machine. Well, none of this when I was out here last time. In prison, you sleep, you don't rest. My sleep patterns are still thrown off. I still got a habit of getting up, checking all my doors. In prison, all doors are locked. Yeah. I knew y'all was at that pool. <laughs> I see you. Uh-oh. Hey, Munchkin. When I got out, it was a shock to be called granddaddy or daddy by my daughter and my grandkids. Watching my dad be a granddad, you could tell he's been on um, trying to make up for me. In her eyes, she wanted him here. She just became angry, and you know, been been angry ever since about it. You know, I, I tell I always let her know if he could get out to be here with you, he would. Wanda, 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 Wanda. <laughs> yeah, I told you to, uh, they're going with a life. I had a life sentence for something I didn't do. You know, I had to let her go. I had planned on not ever, you know, being with anyone I was with before. You know, that Dante did. Honestly, that Dante did. Well, I was not expecting him to come home to me. I always said it. You know, I always told people. Like, oh, he come home, and I'm not gonna let nobody get him. I'm, you know, he belongs to me. It's like my, I'm gonna get my family now. I'm gonna tell you what really got me. When I seen my grandkids, with them, and money, that was my family. That's what I always wanted. When I seen that foursome, they wanted to dance a little bit. I said, I got it, I'm back. I got to try this. I got to go with it. We still don't know each other all, you know, the way, but. It's better. He kind of catching on to me. I'm catching on to him. So. I tell one of the artists, I said, just don't know how much I love her, man. She don't even know her, man. Because I always wanted a child. I never got to be with her. I never got to be with her.
people think that when you get exonerated, the celebration is on, it's over with, the fight is over, and they're celebrating it. Just beginning, really. It's just beginning. Well, when I first got out, I couldn't get a job. The felony that was stopping me from getting a job, the felony stopping me from getting an apartment. It seemed like the felony was controlling my life. And the only way I can get the felony on my record is get pardoned. I haven't been pardoned. Governor Roy Cooper, for some reason, hasn't pardoned me. If I were to get a pardon, it would make everything a lot easier. Hi, everybody. Governor Roy Cooper here. Every year, we carve out time to do the turkey pardon. We eat turkey for Thanksgiving, so it's a tradition for the governor and the president to pardon the turkey for Thanksgiving. That's a holiday that we celebrate here in America. It's all right to have tradition, but pardoning a human being is way more important than pardoning an animal. I am announcing that I am a candidate for governor of North Roy Cooper became the governor of North Carolina after serving for more than 30 years as the attorney general or in some form or fashion within the criminal justice system. And now as governor, he has the ability to decide the future of Dante's life. Okay. A pardon is a technical term. It can only come from the governor in North Carolina. And it is the only way to get a determination by the state that you are innocent, and it is the only way to get compensated. You get a very small amount of money <laughs> in comparison to what has been taken away from you. But it's that stability that allows you to be able to build a new life. A part would allow me to give back to people that help me. I think a pardon for my dad would mean he would be able to do what he wants to do, but he still says it wouldn't make up for the time. Can I get my pardon? Can I get my freedom? Something that was given to me by God that you mistakenly took from me? He is not asking for the state of North Carolina to apologize. He's asking for the state of North Carolina to acknowledge the wrong and give him what is due under the Constitution. I don't expect no apology. You don't have to apologize to me. Just give him my pardon. Only one thing. Here we go again. <laughs> fight, fight, fight. <laughs> All the way to fight. you get exonerated, you're supposed to be able to get pardoned. There are some actual other states that have automatic pardons after you get exonerated. Right. North Carolina's not one of them. I'm not begging for it. I'm not pleading for it. I'm just here to put Mr. Cooper, this whole system, North Carolina on notice that I'm going to keep right on talking because there's more guys left that I left in there behind me that's innocent. They buried this man alive. You're looking at a miracle. There was never an intention for him to be standing here today. When you try to do this and you do this and you kill a person's dream, most of the folk never come back. Past time. Past time. Past time. 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 Y'all see that? We are tired. <laughs> Pardon now. Thank you, Reverend. All right. Thank, all right. Thank, we need thank all of you. We need that ASAP. Thank you. Yes, no, thank all like of you. Thank you. I used to wonder about people talking about freedom. Got no freedom coming all for them. Man of the free, mm -hmm. home of the free. Mm -hmm. Who the free you talking about? <laughs> Who the free you talking to? I'm glad Dante's out. 
Yeah, he's ought to be ready. Can't get what I lost in 26 years. I got my son back, thank God. We got to stop from where we are right now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this unity today. We thank you, God, for the food we're about to receive. We ask you to have it to be a nourishment to our body and a blessing to our knees. In Jesus' name, we thank you. Amen. Freedom to me is, you know, uh, not being locked in, boxed in by them fences and them razor wire. It's been bittersweet since I've been home. It ain't all been roses. Today is more like a celebration of the beginning of my freedom because I still haven't been pardoned. There's some guys that never been pardoned. They've been home 10 years, you know. I'm not going to let it hold me back or hold me down because I can't. I'm going to live whether I get it or not.